Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. Morgana today is going to be showing you how she painted this beautiful sky. These cloud formations are often quite difficult to achieve, but she's got a really good method for painting what we sometimes call a mackerel sky with these lovely puffy clouds. Like everything and every skill, this is going to take a little bit of practice. Um, all of our tutorials do, but it's well worth the effort because this subtle effect is really beautiful. Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Morgana here today and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you how to paint this lovely simple seascape in watercolour. Here is the inspiration behind today's painting. Uh, I took this photo when I visited a place called Bracklesham Bay in the UK uh, some days ago. For this painting I'm using an Ash brand watercolour block uh, with 100% cotton paper. Um, I'll pop all the details of everything I'm using today uh, in the description below the video but to begin with you can see I've just used some regular old masking tape to just tape off the lower third of the paper here and this is going to be our horizon line. So the first step for this painting is putting in that lovely grey sky. So I'm beginning by uh, simply washing the top two thirds of the paper with clean water using my large mop brush. You want to get that paper really nice and saturated uh, and then wait for a minute or two to let the water sink in before you begin to paint. For the sky today, I'm using a mixture of colours. This is Payne's Grey going on first, and I'm going to do quite a light, loose wash of this with plenty of water, and I'm also going to mix in a touch of ultramarine. Now, of course, you don't have to use these colours. Uh, you can use whichever colours you like. A mixture of uh, any sort of blue or grey will work here, uh, as long as it's light enough, because we want that really nice, soft, neutral tone sky, uh, which is going to, of course, reflect in the sea uh, that we're going to paint in afterwards. So you can see here that I'm trying to keep the colour relatively even across this whole uh, top section of the painting. Uh, I want a nice, soft, neutral base for the clouds that I'm about to put in. Um, today I'm excited to paint a really simple version of what's known around here as a mackerel sky. So a sky that's got these lovely puffy little layers of cloud spattered across it that look like the scales on a mackerel. And this is uh, the first attempt here at putting them in. Uh, you can see my paper is actually too wet and the clouds aren't taking properly. Uh, so what I did was after this attempt, I simply took my masking tape off and left my paper to dry for a couple of minutes. Just let that water sink in. And you can see here I'm coming back in um, with a clean damp brush to pull out a little bit of paint uh, and get these clouds going. And all you need is a mop brush. You can see I'm using my large mop brush. Again, a clean damp brush and just sort of dab on gently into the wet paint and pull out a little bit of color. And if you get this sort of soft diagonal motion with your dabs, um, it's gonna dry really nicely with um, a softening at the edges that you get from painting wet in wet and it's going to give you this lovely, simple mackerel sky effect. So I left my sky to dry fully before I began painting in the rest of the landscape. And I'm starting here with the sea, and I'm actually using exactly the same colours as I used to paint the sky to do our sea today, because it's always nice to have that sort of colour harmony, to have the sky reflected in the sea is always uh, a fun thing for a painting. So I'm using a really, really heavily diluted mixture of Payne's Grey and Ultramarine. You can see this is um, more water than paint um, at this point. It's really, really light. Uh, it's just enough to give that hint of a really pale, uh, see that's reflecting that sort of slightly glowing cloudy sky above. 
and with my mop brush I'm just spreading it over the paper more heavily on the left leaving quite a lot of dry brush uh, on the right hand side and in the lower section because um, that's where I'm going to put in a little bit of land uh, basically uh, a few sand banks here uh, which I'm painting in with um, a smaller mop brush this is a size 10 uh, whereas before I was using the size 14 for the sky and the clouds so a little bit smaller a little bit more control and you can see I've painted this quickly um, over the area in parts where I've just painted in the sea as well you can see in parts we're getting a lovely soft diffusion with this sandbank colour uh, fading into the water uh, on the left hand side here uh, this colour was mixed with um, a bit of Van Dyke brown added into my Payne's grey and then again diluted quite heavily and we get this lovely soft again sort of neutral sandy colour And now very quickly in this uh, section here on the right uh, I decided to add in a little more grey because uh, this is going to be um, some pools of water, little tide pools, pools of seawater uh, so I thought I'd add in a little bit of the extra uh, sea colour that I had mixed up, that lovely pale grey again. And now I wanted to put in a distant headland, uh, referring to my photograph there is uh, a curve of land you can see uh, coming in from the right hand side so um, I'm just coming in with my flat brush, uh, this is just a uh, relatively small to medium sized flat brush, uh, all you need is anything that comes to a nice uh, sort of chisel edge and the easiest way is to just take up a little bit of your paint I'm using uh, the mixture of paint that I used for my sand colour uh, but with a little bit more paint spray added so it's a touch darker uh, and then just drawing it carefully across the horizon line uh, making it much thinner towards the centre of the paper and then thickening it up a little bit as we come towards the edge uh, as the land gets uh, closer to us, the viewer, so we see it uh, standing slightly larger. And now, uh, my apologies, I forgot to turn the camera on at the beginning of this section of filming, but I began uh, just using a little bit of Payne's Grey to darken up the uh, foreground here of the sand. Uh, you can see I'm just finishing it off now uh, with, again, just using my mop brush uh, and some really, really light dilute Payne's Grey and just brushing it gently over these uh, sandbanks and just getting a little bit of a darker colour in there. This also just helps to get that uh, extra bit of texture into the sand. Love that sort of sense that the tide has gone out and left these little ripples and dimples and shapes uh, in the sand as it's withdrawn. Now, uh, before beginning your figures, you want to leave that to dry completely again or uh, give it a quick blast with a hairdryer if you're in a hurry. Uh, because otherwise uh, your figures will soften out too much when you try to paint them in and go very fuzzy. Uh, but once it's dry, uh, choose a good spot. <laughs> I chose the, uh, the middle of uh, this lovely beach here to put in my figures uh, and I chose to put a pair together, perhaps walking arm in arm or at least side by side, um, having a, uh, a lovely winter stroll across this beach. And this is, uh, this is a really fun part of the painting, at least for me. I always try and uh, take my time and enjoy this because I find that as soon as you start adding little details like this into a landscape, they can really make it come alive. So I'm just using um, a small brush. This is a size 2 slash 0, so it's pretty fine. Uh, and I think it's a good size to use when you're doing figures on this sort of scale because uh, it means that you can go slowly and carefully and get those nice fine lines and careful shapes. Now with a painting like this that's uh, quite loose and quite uh, free, 
you really don't need to worry too much about uh, putting in a heavy detail as long as your figures look vaguely human <laughs> then you're all good at this point uh, it might also be fun to add a dog or two uh, and you can add as many uh, figures here as you like uh, or as few you can leave it as a one solitary walker if uh, that is the type of painting that you prefer now what's quite important to remember if you're doing a beach scene such as this, uh, particularly one with uh, a receding tide leaving behind some lovely tide pools and damp sand, uh, is of course the reflections of our figures uh, on that damp sand. And this is really lovely and simple to do. All you need is a slightly paler colour uh, than the one that you use to paint in the figures. So I've just watered down uh, my mix of Payne's Grey and Van Dyke Brown a little bit. Uh, and all you need to do is just scrape that down from the feet of your figures following the vague shape um, just a lovely little uh, vertical line and there you are, it's as simple as that see I've just done it for that extra little figure I decided to pop uh, up on the right hand side there now he's a lot further away from us so I've made him considerably smaller but I've still uh, done the figure and the reflection on the same scale as our pair of waters that we've got a little bit closer to us. And now just to add a, a little extra life into the painting, uh, I've just popped in a couple of birds down here on the right hand corner. I thought we have this lovely tide pool here, this lovely paler patch uh, that I haven't painted in as darkly. So why not have a couple of seabirds paddling about, looking for shellfish, looking for little shrimps perhaps, anything to feed on. And of course uh, for the birds, especially as they are standing in some water, we want to pop in their reflections as well. Just using exactly the same technique, just pulling a slightly paler colour down from the feet of the birds. And of course, if you uh, paint it anything in too darkly like this, uh, it's a, a simple matter while the paint is wet to simply uh, lift the colour up with a clean piece of tissue or kitchen towel uh, and then uh, go in again with your brush a little more carefully. Now at this point uh, we're nearly finished but I decided that the sea looked a little bit dull and a little bit still so um, I'm coming in again with my lovely pale grey colour uh, and my mop brush and just uh, washing over it really lightly with a little bit of extra colour. So you can see there I've just uh, simply dabbed in a little extra colour with my mop brush and now I'm moving on to the final touch, which is a scattering of soaring seabirds. So I'm using my fine brush again to paint these fellows in, and just a little bit of Payne's Grey is perfect for these simple silhouettes. Now at this point you can add in as many or as few birds as you like. Um, I decided to stick with just these three, so here we are with the finished painting. I really enjoyed painting this one today, uh, it gave me a lovely sense of calm painting with these uh, beautiful sort of tonal neutral colours for a change. Uh, I really enjoyed it and I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching it too and I hope that you enjoy painting it if you decide to give this one a go. If you'd like to see more videos like this one please follow the link below to my Patreon page uh, and sign up there. Um, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of you who've already done that. Uh, I'm really, really grateful and it's fantastic to have you there. Um, to everybody else, I wish you a wonderful rest of the day, wherever you are and whatever you're up to, uh, and happy painting.